The hardest part of building a PC is picking the parts, especially when everyone around you has an opinion. The debate over which GPU manufacturer is the best, either AMD or Nvidia, is a full-fledged war that's fierce and extremely crazy. If you find anyone telling you that one of these companies sucks, then they are not to be trusted. These two companies equally make great video cards for PC gaming, and you should consider both for your build. So in today's video, instead of directly comparing two graphic cards, I'm going to talk on the key differences between AMD and Nvidia's GPUs so that you can get an idea over which manufactured card will suit you the best. By far the most important factor in choosing a video card is its price to performance ratio. You'll hear a lot of people saying AMD is way better on price or Nvidia is definitely the better choice for your money. The truth is that there is really no definite answer to this question. It really all depends on time. For instance, while this video is being made, Nvidia's new GTX 900 series of video car is clearly the best choice for people who can afford it. However, how long will it last is tough to say. And ultimately, if you're seeking ideal performance for your budget, your best bet is to go with a car from the most recently released series possible, regardless of which manufacturer produced it. So just decide on your budget, pick a few cards from each company that fit the price range and start looking up the benchmarks. The next thing that we tend to focus on is the power consumption. Just as it's impossible to choose which video card manufacturer has a better performance for the price, it's also impossible to pick which one produces the most power efficient card. And the reason behind it is basically the same. Both manufacturers continuously tend to improve upon their architecture of their graphic boards and are therefore able to produce more power efficient card. For instance, when Nvidia first released their Fermi architecture in 2010, despite retaking the lead in performance, the new cards had some serious problem with power consumption. In fact, Nvidia cards are always taken a backseat to AMD in terms of power. However, with Nvidia's new 700 series, they had made a great stride to make the cards more power efficient and the cards currently consume on average less than similarly priced AMD cards. So, essentially the most power efficient card is likely going to be available from whichever of the two manufacturers have just released their latest series of cards. Now let's take a look at the two of the most important technologies implemented by AMD and Nvidia. Physics by NVIDIA is an engine that provides physics simulations to help improve the overall experience of the game that utilizes it. Basically, it improves the graphics by bringing more complex physics calculations into the mix. For instance, if you're shooting a gun at a wall, physics will try to determine what kind of realistic effect shooting a wall would have and then produce it on the screen. With physics, the idea is to make the effect as real as possible. So instead of just a hole appearing on the wall, with physics, it will make the wall shatter. And as the technology improves and more games are developed to incorporate physics, it will definitely be a huge selling point for Nvidia cards over AMD. AMD's iInfinity has been around a lot longer than Nvidia's surround. However, in the past, Nvidia's surround has improved a lot. Prior to Nvidia 600 series, if you want to run 3 monitors on an Nvidia card, you needed to have 2 video cards in SLI configuration. Nowadays, you can do it with a single card. With that being said, AMD's iInfinity is more established and many people feel that it's a lot easier to set up and use iInfinity also has more options and allows you to add more than 3 screens. If you're planning to overclock your video card, then AMD is a way to go. AMD cards aren't restricted by locked voltage control like Nvidia cards are. It's understandable why Nvidia would limit their overclocking potential on the cards, because they don't want the cards to be fried. But still, for gamers, squeezing out every ounce of performance is a hobby. Without a locked voltage control, AMD cards have a lot more overclocking potential and thus it would be a better option for people who want extreme performance. When you're planning to build a PC, asking experienced people for advice is usually a great idea. But when it comes to video cards, be prepared for some serious brand wars and don't let other opinion train yours. First and foremost, look at which card performs the best in your budget. If you require any exclusive technology, say you want to work with Oculus Rift or want trees effects instead of how works, then these may sway your decisions as well. Both GP manufacturers have their ups and downs, and choosing one over the other is not going to be that easy. It really all depends on which manufacturer has just released the newest line of cards, and also on your personal needs. Also have a look at the benchmark before getting the GPU. And do let us know which one would you choose and why on the comments below. Either way, thanks for watching. Yours truly Droid Sector, ours truly this life.